everyone. It's Leslie Snyder at Rosehaven Yarn Shop. Welcome to episode number two. And this is going to actually be a kind of a special episode because we have our third annual wool and wine knitting retreat going on. And we have two amazing women coming in to teach, and that's Fiona Ellis and Kate Atherley. Uh, you can find all of us on Instagram and Ravelry and Facebook. You'll see it on the bottom of the, the bottom of the screen somewhere down here. Okay. So, or it may be above me, I don't know. It depends on where my editor decides to put it. So, we are going to actually get a chance to interview and chat with Fiona and with Kate. So, that's coming up. And also, Pearl and Jay is coming by for a little roll and stop and visit. It's the coolest little truck that Joan bought. It's a 1980s fire truck that she's turned into this really amazing little funky yarn shop on wheels. So we're gonna take a tour of that as well. So uh, yeah, and what else are we gonna do? We're gonna talk about of knitting, of course. Fiona's gonna show us this kind of cool human cable wooling. So, cause she's teaching us about cables, so she's gonna actually make us act out in human form, the movement of the stitches. And, and we're gonna see some knitting, of course. So, Leslie, live on location right now, here today is Leslie Snyder on location at Jackson Falls Country Inn. Take it away, Leslie. Welcome to the Wool and Wine Knit Retreat 2016. Behind me, that's Jackson Falls Country Inn. It's this beautiful old 1800 schoolhouse. It's incredibly beautiful inside, and that's where we're staying and doing all our classes. So this is the front of Jackson Falls, that's the schoolhouse, and then the inn has been added to it. And then behind it, there's a little coach house in the back with more rooms. It's a gorgeous spot. And across the road, right here, can you hear that bit of roaring? That's the Jackson Falls, right down there. The trees are still beautiful, even though it isn't early November, they still got a little bit of leaves in color. It's a gorgeous place here, Milford, Ontario. What a beautiful day and it looks gorgeous there with all the fall colors. So thanks again for that and I understand you're going to have Fiona is going to start her interview in just a moment. I can't wait to hear what she says and all the interesting things that she's been up to. So let's hear from Fiona now and Leslie at their interview. Hey everyone, this is Leslie Snyder on location at Jackson Falls Country Inn in Milford, Ontario, Prince Edward County, and we have with us today Fiona Ellis. Ah, hi. <laughs> hi, hi, everybody. So, Fiona's teaching us creative cables, and tomorrow we get to do slip stitch and color fun, That's right? That's right, yeah. yes, yeah. So, so, we're going to have people experiment with color, but using slip stitch because it's such a, a simple fun. technique, but Easy. you can get a lot of bang for your buck from it. Yes. Yeah. So how do you like the retreat so far? Oh, it's fantastic. There's such a nice bunch of knitters and it's such a great location. And this time of year, I, you know, my cardigan fits in nicely with the scenery. And it's like the perfect sweater weather and it's been dry, a little gray today, but yeah, and there's still lots of color around. So, and you're in the middle of nowhere. It's country fields around us. It's pretty awesome. Yeah. It is, it really is. Good. Yeah. So let's see, what is one of the good questions that we haven't thought of? Oh, okay. So. Favorite knitting tool that you're surprised, you know, it's one of those tools you're like, I'm never going to use that, but you try it and then you're like, I kind of love mm. this tool. I'm not a big gadget person. Mm. I still have like the needle set that I had when I was 14. You know? Oh really? Like, yeah, I still have those. They have memories and, yes. and what have you, but I do have this one little handy dandy tool that came from my knitting machine that I use all the time. From your knitting machine? Yeah, okay. so it's a, basically it's a machine knitting needle but with a plastic handle on it. Right. So the, the butt that normally the cams would work on mm -hmm. is covered and it's got a plastic. So it's like a latch tool but right. it's a fine gauge so it's great for anything that's kind of like DK, maybe fingering and up to you know a heavy worsted. And we use And that? so I use it for See mistakes. Oh my goodness. Oh, not that I ever okay. make any of those, but you know, never. You know, um, or if I decided, you know, <laughs> that this pearl stitch really needs to be a knit stitch, I can ladder it down. And then instead of using a crochet hook, okay. you can use it and it's you're not having to do this weird yes. action. Oh, so, kind of brilliant. Uh, yeah. Okay. And then the best thing when we get into color work is sewing in the ends. So instead oh, of threading it into <sighs> threading Finishing. it into a, a needle. 
I can take the hook and go towards the end and I'm, I'm weaving in. Right. Go through the pearl bumps of the stitches. Hook it. Put the yarn into it, and as you pull it back through, it closes the latch, and oh. you can pull it through, and then go in the other Try direction. And, right. Yeah. Nice. It's great. Yeah. So I use it a lot for that. Okay. It's kind of like those tools that we used to use when we did rug hooking. Is exactly that kind of like that, like, yeah. but it's a finer gauge. So yeah. You know, okay. Distorting. I remember those rug hooking kit kits, 1970s. We were oh, all there. No, we weren't. We sure, no, we're not no, old no. enough for remembering That's that. True. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's see. What's what's one of the if you were just gonna knit for yourself, what do you, what's one of the things that you just kinda like to play at just to, to knit? What's what's this knitting for yourself? Oh what, I know. what is this? Um, <laughs> <laughs> I know, I don't really have a lot of stuff. This, I have yeah, this, but um, yes. Yeah, I my carry around projects are usually like, you know, a cowl or a pair right. of mittens or something, you know, um, yeah. and they're brainless kind of things, usually yeah. pretty yarn and, and nothing to. Uh, but last year I did make two sweaters for myself and it was like, this is like a whole, you know, amazing thing to me. This is gorgeous. Yeah, this was one. And I like oh, all the different um, buttons. Oh, yes. Never right, be afraid right. of jazzing oh, up I, your buttons. I, I love vintage <laughs> buttons and there weren't enough for this, so I had to get That's two sets. That's the way, of... right? So this is one of your patterns. It is, yeah. yeah. So um, I started with doing one for the uh, knit along that the Purple Pearl was running. Right. And I had this, wow, well, I'm joining, I'll join the knit along. Maybe I could make something for myself <laughs> because I have all of these fabulous sweaters, but they're all in yeah. sample size small or medium oh, and I'm not yes. really a small or a medium yes. so they don't fit me. Your normal size. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, yes. I, well I could make it to make to fit me so yeah. I, I did one and then I'm like wow this is great I'm on a roll so I, I knit With this one. Nice. Well, and I was What's that pattern? What's it called? It's called Heart on Your Sleeve because oh, it has cute. a Celtic heart pattern and so, it's on the sleeve. And they'd be able to find it on Ravelry. I'm they, will, yes. they search okay. for Heart on Your Sleeve Plucky Knitter and my name, okay. they should find it. So it's not in my Ravelry, on my Ravelry page, it's under the Plucky. Oh, yeah. okay, because you're yeah. using Plucky Knitter yarn. I am. Which you said was from Michigan. Michigan, right? yeah. Nice. Yeah. Another, yeah. I love those girls. Did, were they, really they, was, is Plucky Knitter another indie dyer? Yes. They started out, they yeah. seem like they're getting, getting some oh, popularity. Yes. Very I love it. You guys popular. are rocking with this whole indie dyer. Like, yeah. it's just, it's so awesome. We're getting so many cool yarns in. Fabulous colors. And as a cable knitter, I kind of shied away from it for a while because of the busy colors. It, yeah. you know, competes with the patterning as I was showing in class this morning. Yes. But what I found is that a lot of these are these tone on tone or the Monochromatics. Red, and it mm. adds like a level of texture almost to the cable work It does, as well. so you kind of almost adds to the shading underneath and makes them... Exactly. So yeah, it's done a the lot of things spot. with Sweet Georgia yarn, Plucky Knitter, yes. and Indigo, Sweet Georgia, another Canadian. Indigo Dragonfly. I oh, love Kim's yes. work. I'm on a mission to get that in the shop. We often work back and forth, Kim and I, to come up with, nice. you know, colorways that yeah. really work with her and, uh, Oh, yeah, fun. Some fun names. Yeah. We are gonna totally hook up and do some fun stuff. Oh, oh yeah, we should totally because I know you do patterns for stores and things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. There's do, yeah. so many things I have to do. <laughs> it's hard. Or it's, you know, only 24 hours in a day. I, yeah, yeah, I know. It's that sleep. Thing, yeah. <laughs> and now we're podcasting too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> every two weeks, but we're trying to do every two weeks, so we'll see. <laughs> well, that's fun. brilliant. Thanks yeah. so much, Fiona. Yeah. Um. Okay. One last question. What is your favorite? Relax cocktail. Drink of choice. You, the accent gives it away. Yes. It has to be a gin and tonic. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> has to be a no, gin and tonic. No, I did read on yeah. Facebook something that said gin and when people that drink gin and tonic are smarter. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah, yeah you know, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and an occasional. My, mo my mother-in-law makes a really fabulous gin and tonic, and we, you show up at her house, There's a and, you know, and oh, I don't know, maybe a lot of gin, I think. But, oh, okay. and, and you show up to her house, and she's like, oh, "Gin tea, darling, here you go." And you know, gin and, tea. So, yeah, <laughs> there you go. Like, that yeah, sounds very right, civilized. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that's my my cocktail of choice. But brilliant, yeah, I do All like right. whiskey as well. So oh, yeah. Canadian whiskey. Yeah. Or on, on occasion, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There's yes. some good ones. Yeah, just don't ask me about the bourbon. I had a, a terrible evening with bourbon. On that <laughs> didn't, I didn't ask me about that. <laughs> yes, no problem. We'll leave that for another day. Yeah, <laughs> off camera. <laughs> exactly. Well, thanks so much, Fiona. It Thank you awesome. so much for having me. Thank and you. I'm having the best time. So and we're going to try and convince her to come back next year too. <gasps> well, twist my arm. Yes. <laughs> Twist my Celtic arm. Yes, yeah. twist, twist my Celtic knot. <laughs> Brilliant. Thanks so much. Bye, guys. Bye. That was a great interview. Thanks, Fiona. 
feeling a little thirsty for a gin and tonic. That sounds lovely right now. Um, so, and Fiona has this really interesting thing that she did in her class that we're going to see. She wanted to show a different way of looking at how cabling works with pushing and pulling the stitches and holding it on separate needles. So she actually got five of us together and we did the human cable. So watch this. It's kind of cool. So we're going to go ahead and slip the first three stitches onto the cable needle. So those two nets plus this one first we'll step forward. onto the cable step forward. needle okay, we're forward. and hold them at the front. Then we're going to work these two knit stitches from the left needle. So we get knit. So we're now on the right needle and we have been knit. And in order to get to the purl stitch to have her in the middle, she's on the wrong end of our cable needle. So we have to slide the purl stitch onto the left needle in order to be able to get to her. And then we can purl her. We have two stitches remaining on the cable needle, which are now knit stitches, so we work those. And notice now we have two knits, one purl, two knits. But this pair of knits and that pair of knits have exchanged places, but we still have the purl stitch in the, in the center there. And it's one of those beautiful finesse things that we uh, are able to do. So okay. we're, we're this cable, so we're going like the stitches coming in front, right? Um, There's a dog. Well, yes, that's bigger. correct. Yes. Okay. Yes, it's a cable okay. front because you know the stitches to the front. So it would be a T5, and I put a P for pearl F because you've held the stitches to the front. So T traveling knits and pearls are involved, five total number of stitches that are involved, F or P for the pearl, and then F because we hold them in the front and they are crossing in that direction towards the end of the row. Brilliant. Uh, take a bow stitches. <laughs> Thank you. The two cables come together, but they don't quite meet. There's one purl stitch in the middle. So in order to be able to keep that purl stitch in the middle so it's really elegant, then that's when we do that particular cross. Yes. And it's often used for Celtic knot cables because they often have this one centered stitch that uh, one purl stitch in the middle is an odd number. So it means that the cables don't actually touch. They get close, but not quite touching. Now we're going to watch the interview with Kate Atherley. And she's going to talk about some of her knitting and some of the things that she's made. And she's also got uh, a few books out and she's starting to work on right now, which I think is coming up this spring, she said, is her um, mitts and gloves book. So she's basically taking what she created with her sock knitting world of getting socks to be the perfect size for everybody's feet and all the measurements. She does all the math and she built that book and now she's doing the same thing for mitts and gloves. So we'll show you images of the books that are currently in print and she'll talk a little bit about that book that's coming up as well. Take it away, Kate and Leslie, my clone. Hi everyone, this is Leslie Snyder of Rosehaven Yarn Shop. So. We're at the knitting retreat, and this is Kate Atherley. Ta-da! Hello! <laughs> Happy to be here. Oh yes, microphone, sorry. <laughs> Lean into the mic. Yes. <laughs> so we all know Kate, I'm sure, right? So Kate is well known for socks, I understand, right? Socks, yes. was that kind of how you started? It was, yeah. So I have designed lots of things, but I'm mostly about socks, and sort of my the biggest book that I've written so far is about sock knitting. And because um, I this I'd like to joke this entire career started for me because I have small feet because I bought this fantastic book about sock knitting this was mm, 20 years ago now and it um, all the patterns came in one size oh. which drove me nuts because uh, they weren't my size so I started re-engineering the sock patterns and here I am. Brilliant. And I help you, other people re-engineer the sock patterns. So this is where I do the promo. promo. So, promo. So promo. this is the book about sock knitting. And so it's all about making sure that they fit you properly. Nice. So now are you talking in that book also the different ways to knit socks? Like toe up, toe Top down. Up, down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what I've done with that is I've got two basic sock patterns, uh, a plain toe up and a plain top down. And then I give you the math for them for nine gauges and 12 sizes. Oh, brilliant. And then beyond that, if you want to customize them, if you've got unusually shaped feet, uh, <laughs> I, high arches. Yeah, exactly. I teach you how to measure them, how to determine what your fit needs might be, and then how to adjust them. 
And then there's also a bunch of patterns in there too. So you don't have to do any math at all. I had, you know, I've had a couple of people say to me, but I don't want to do any math. Okay, I've done it for you, but if you're so inclined, or if you do need to customize, it's all there. Oh, brilliant. I think uh, my husband doesn't like his hand knit socks so far because the sizing hasn't been quite right. He says they're a little too baggy in spots and he doesn't like that so it's well fitted. So there's this book that can help you. Perfect. Yeah. All you need is a tape measure. So. Oh, well, we all have tape measures. Yes. <laughs> and what's the other book that you've got? So there? the other book is, this is the most recent one. And this is one, um, this came out of my work as a pattern editor. So I work as a technical editor. Oh, wow. For lots okay. of designers. Nitty is kind of my main gig. And I wrote this book because I discovered that a lot of people who are really good at designing are not good at writing patterns. And that's not a bad thing. The thing is they're completely different skill sets. Yes. Like one of them is technical writing and the other one is the creative, the designing side of things. And so because I come from a technical writing background, I think my strength is more in actually the writing the patterns than the designing. And so I help people, you know, figure out how to organize the information and how to make sure they're communicating enough to the knitters that anybody can, you know, can make one of those things that you show in the photographs. And that book's been fantastically well received because there's really, Excellent. there's lots of sock books out there, but there really is nothing like that book out there. Yeah, because uh, one of the big complaints always with knitters, I mean, let's face it, we're always complaining that if only we had a completely, like everyone wrote the pattern the same way. But of yes. course, all these different countries have different ways and different, exactly. Exactly. so. So yeah, yes. so the book is all about teaching designers to sort of better communicate the instructions. And um, it's right. been really well received and I was very pleased by that. And Excellent. you know, hopefully it will help a little bit and help knitters. Yeah, you know, so you said these are interweave. They're both from interweave, yeah. Nice, so, so you should yeah. be able to find them probably no problem. Yes. Okay, so here's, let's see, let's come up with a question. Oh, I asked Fiona this question, so I'll ask you. What is a knitting tool that you acquired or sort of came across and turned out that you're like, it's like the most awesome tool that you use a lot? So there's a couple of things I use a ton. Um, bent tip darning needles are the greatest thing since sliced bread. Okay. I didn't think there could be a technology improvement in darning needles. Like darning needles, they're straight, right? Yeah. Like how, yeah. but I love the clover ones, or the higher, higher ones because they come in colors. Oh. And so, cause the silver ones, when you drop a silver darning needle on the floor, you like it gets hidden in the carpet, right? Or in the couch <laughs> or, yes. um, you know, when we moved recently this summer and the couch got tilted to go out the front door, I, the, the number of stitch markers in darning needles is <laughs> horrifying. Um, but this, the colored ones, you can't lose them as easily. Right. And also that bent tip makes it incredibly easy to pick up the stitches. I thought the I like those too. Yeah. And it's funny because I have customers who come in and see the bent tip ones and they're like, oh no, 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 that's not what I want. I want the straight ones. And it's so oddly good. enough, I think it's Clover has stopped making their straight little inexpensive sets. Good. I can't even find them now because I have customers that are adamant they want them, but they're disappearing people, so if you see them, grab them. Or, or don't, actually, or because don't, honestly, yes. the bent tip ones are better. Um, <laughs> we must grow with the times. Yeah, well, and you know what? <laughs> Good I tools. I love people. They're unusual looking, and at first I was like, mm, I don't, I'm don't. i not sure how that works, but once you try them, and when I teach a finishing class, I insist everybody try them, yes. and everybody's like, right, okay, or I will be buying those. So, yes. Yeah, no, they're absolutely fantastic. No, I adore Keep those. your minds open. Try new things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you're only as good as your tools. You know, it helps you kind of pick up the back of the stitch. Yes. The other thing that I use a lot, and I, if I know you were going to ask me this, I have one that I could <laughs> show you. So I used to be in software, I used to be in the tech industry, and you go to conferences a lot and you get those clear conference badge holders. Yep. Oh, kind of. No, yeah, like no, that, but you know the badge holder, you right? Slide the okay. cards in. Those are the best thing in the world because what I do is I print out the chart that I'm working on and my patent notes and stuff and stuff it in my project bag. Oh, okay. And it's a little protected and it's got its little chart in there. Yeah. Oh, brilliant. Yeah. Unless, I, I mean, if I'm working a really big chart, I'll use one of those eight and a half by 11 sheet protectors. Yes. But those still get scrunched up when you toss them in the bottom of your bag. The little stiff, clear, Plastic badge holders. Yeah, name tag holders. Yeah, things. the yeah. best thing. And so, yeah, whether it's just little tiny notes on a, you know, for what you're working on, nice. your chart, you know, whatever, it's all there. That's Love awesome. Them. Love them. So you were you were originally in the tech industry. So yes. Interesting. Yep. But yeah. you ran away. I did. I escaped. Follow the dream. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I did. So yeah. Yeah. Oh, awesome. So okay. So show us what are you wearing? What am I wearing? Okay, I am wearing a pie shawl. 
Oh, aren't they having a knit along with Eric? He's doing pie shawls. Oh, uh, Eric sticks and sticks and twine. Possibly, yeah. This oh, is wow. just sort of my execution of the basic Elizabeth Zimmerman um, eyelet pie shawl. Right. And uh, I did it very basic for a couple of reasons. First of all, because it's in black and anything complicated would have been challenging. Hard to see. But yeah. also, I wear a lot of, I'm sort of darkly dressed today, but I wear a lot of brightly colored dresses and lots of prints and things. And I really, I wanted a black shawl. Yeah. And I find that I wear this a ton. Also, it doesn't show the coffee stains when you <laughs> inevitably spill coffee on it. So that, and this is kind of my travel blankie, right? Because it's huge. Nice. Yeah. And then I'm wearing a pair of little fingerless mittens. And, and these are not cute. only practical, but nice segue. The next book Oh, this time next year is a uh, custom fit um, mittens and gloves. Nice. So it's... lots of people don't can't find the perfect mitten pattern. I've been hearing that a lot lately. So similar concept, multiple gauges um, and multiple sizes. And what I've got is a bunch of design variations. So you can make a full mitten with a hand and a full thumb and then an open fingerless version. You can do gloves with full fingers or open fingers. And I've got flip tops and a flip oh, top good. thumb. And, Whole bunch the of texting thumbs. Yes. yes. A whole <laughs> bunch of variations and a bunch of patterns as well. And so these really? are they're just leftover sock yarn and they're I've been wearing them a lot, so they're already they're looking a bit tired, but I tend to get pretty cold hands and we live in an old drafty house. Yes. And I like these and I make them pretty tiny. And so they're like 15 grams of sock yarn a piece, which is great. Oh, wow. so they're fantastic for yeah. leftovers. So that I can so still type and work game. and knit. Yeah, yeah. absolutely type and work and knit and everything and there's basically no thumb i just make the gusset and then just cast off right uh and then they keep my hands a little bit warm and... i know it's surprising because uh, when i used to work in uh, our barn as a gift shop in the like in november for christmasy times and you've got to have your fingers out for keyboards it's yeah. amazing having wool just up to your knuckles it's incredible how much warmer your yeah, hands really are is. and i think it's too keeping it over your pulse on your wrist yes. is a big thing about Absolutely. keeping things warm because exactly. I know my grandfather always said when you went swimming, you got to get your wrists in the water to get used to the temperature of swimming. Uh, so, okay. right. so it's like keep your wrists warm. Even little wrist guards sometimes will make that much yeah, difference yeah, yeah. with keeping Absolutely. you warmer. Absolutely. Pulse points. Yeah, and so these are great. <laughs> and um, I wear them all the time. My mom calls them my Dickensian orphan mittens. But, um, it's a look, right? You know, awesome. That's good. But yeah, and they're in black, not because it's a fashion statement, because then it, because they look filthy. Yes. Because again, coffee Dark stains colors. and, you know, if I'm writing on a chalkboard in a class oh, or yeah. pen marks or what have you, and I kind <laughs> of make a fresh pair every fall and brilliant just thrown away. But, all, you know. all little bits of sock yarn. Yes. So what's your favorite kind of thing to knit if you're going to knit something for yourself that's just, just complete pleasure it's just like something that you just makes you happy to you know what? i love knitting a plain sock because it i can practically knit it a plain sock now with my eyes closed i mean i've knit a thing i've been knitting socks for 20 years wow. i can knit so and i just what i do is that it's sort of less about the knitting i mean i love the knitting but i just love the brightly colored yarns so yes. i buy and the darker the weather gets the brighter the sock yarn. So yes. you were saying that this you knit yes. in February. Yes, this yeah. I knit in February. This is, I'm so goddamn sick of the crappy gray weather and cold and snow. I'm yeah. knitting spring and this became yeah. spring. So I will buy, I, I Regia did a Floromania sock yarn in fluorescent colors. And yeah. I love it. So anything bright and ridiculous in sock yarns. And so and I like the self-striping ones and I like yeah. the ones that do weird things with the f fake fair aisle and yeah. all of that. I love, there's some fun, there's them. some amazing fun patterning out there. It's yeah. just, I would love to stand in front of a computer. Wouldn't it be fun if you could play on that computer and make your own patterns? Mm -hmm. It's like, let me just go in and play on set up your pattern on this computer. Yeah, it's true actually. It's like, you have the custom yarn. Oh, yeah. wouldn't that be fun? Yeah. Let me at your computers. Yes. <laughs> let me yeah, yeah, create yeah. that pattern. So I, that kind of stuff, yarn. It, you know, amuses me no end. Yes. Um, um, but yeah, and I'm, um, yeah, I've been doing a lot of mittens and gloves and I have to say I'm not over them, which is a good sign because nice. when you're knitting for a book, you have to knit lots of things. Yes. Many, many, many. So many I knitted samples. lots and lots of pairs of gloves and I honestly thought I was going to hit this point where I would say never again, but I'm thinking I found a really, really beautiful skein of cashmere blend yarn and I'm thinking of knitting myself a pair of cashmere gloves. So clearly I'm oh, not over gloves. Nice. Yeah. Because so, gloves, that's a whole lot of scary work, all those individual. Little fingers. They're persnickety. Would that be would that be fair?
fair? Yes, yeah, I yeah, would yeah. say. Yeah, persnickety. Yes. yes. And all those because, tiny DPMs. <laughs> right, and all those tiny ends, which is why you need oh. that really great darning needle. Yes. Nice segue, right? But yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 so yeah, it's good. Good. Um, what's your favorite sock heel? There's so many sock heels I'm wearing, oh. but all these heels. The one I use all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so, um... It, the nomenclature is funny because like any folk technique there's so many names for it but, but yes. the one that i use is sometimes known as a dutch or a band or a square heel okay and you get a square underneath the heel okay which and what's nice about it is it uh, so you're working back and forth on the same number of stitches this won't mean anything to you if you've not knit socks before but you're working back and forth over a fixed number of stitches to turn, turn the heel so it means that what you can do, if you're doing a slip stitch reinforcement pattern on the back of the heel, you can actually run that down to the underside of the heel. Oh, okay. Because for a lot of people, they will wear out under the heels, not yes. just the back. If you're slipping in and out of the shoe and you're banging down on that, that part yep. of your heel. So it's a really great heel turn that allows you to re do extra reinforcement. Right. The most popular one that people use, I find, is the half handkerchief heel. Where you get kind of a little V shape yes, and you're, you're, you're adding yeah. one more stitch every row. Again, if you've never sock, you'll know what I mean. I can hear people nodding, I'm sure. <laughs> the thing about that is it's not as easy to do the reinforcement. So mm. I like mine for two reasons. You can do the reinforcement, but also frankly the math is easier too. Oh, well, it comes down to math. I mean right. if you're trying to get socks that fit, I guess that yeah. would be very important yes. at that point. Yeah. Good. Good. All right. Thanks so much. Oh, and the last question. What's your favorite cocktail for relaxing and just chill, chilling? I guess I, it depends on weather too, because if it's a deck and the hot summer or, you know, a cozy fireplace. It's a true favorite. Well, I'm a beer drinker. Okay. So, um, so, and you're quite right. So in the summer, I like a wheat beer and in the winter, I like stouts and porters. Nice. Uh, but if it has to be a cocktail, I'm a Manhattan girl. Oh, oh nice, nice. Manhattan gets a little cherry in them, right? Yeah. 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 See, it's got right. fruit. It's nutritious. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Awesome. See you guys. And we're out for now. And oh, that shawl was gorgeous. And it's true. Everybody could use a black shawl because it goes with everything. And there's always times just a little something warmer around your neck and shoulders. So now we're going to go to the uh, checkout Pearl and Jay yarn truck. And... Leslie, did you see any kind of interesting knitting? Did anyone have a cool shawl out there in the all of the girls and ladies that were taking the classes before we go to the truck? Hi everyone, Hello. this is Carrie. Hello. Carrie has a lovely scarf, so tell us about your scarf. I right? do. So this is oh, I'm blinded. <laughs> Here, checking. There. This is Budding Bluebells from Mina Phillips, known oh, also oh, known yes. as the Knitting X Pat. So yes. yes, yes. Lovely. It is. And what colors, what colors did you use? Oh, and the yarn is from Puloco, which is oh. a one ply merino. Yeah, but another good podcaster yes. yes. <laughs> that we all love. <laughs> exactly. So, okay, so how long did it take you to knit? Was it one of those ones you got going and you couldn't leave Absolutely. it Absolutely. Because, oh, I mean, cool. you started and it just kept changing, so it was great. Oh, yeah. exactly. And it's awesome. like garter stitch, so it doesn't look like too, and then it's got a little, too scary. Yeah, it's got a little, little lace edging. little lace edging and the blue bell, which you probably can't see. It's oh, got a little it's got a yes. Oh, cute. Yes. Nice. So, so it's nice, keeps you interested, but it's fun. It is. Quick and knit. total colors that I would not have picked had it not been for uh, Nina's choice. But nice. Yeah. So two skeins, two skeins, fingering weight, one ply fingering. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Nice. So perfect. Thanks. No problem. <laughs> This is Pearl and Jay. She's got this old 1980s fire truck. Her name's Dorothy. And Joan is the driver, and this is her truck. And we're gonna go visit Joan and check it out inside. It's so cool. Hey everyone, this is Joan, and this is Dorothy, her truck. <laughs> so Joan, how long have you had Pearl and Jay? Uh, I'm in my fourth season now. Oh my goodness, has that yeah, really been yeah. four seasons? Second time at Jackson Falls. Nice, <laughs> yes, and we love when Joan comes. So check out Joan's hand-knit lovely tights. Whoops, I'm off angle, there we go. Aren't they gorgeous? So you got garter belts under that skirt, are they? Oh baby, it goes all the way. <laughs> so how many skeins of yarn did that take? I kind of lost count, but uh, probably at least three skeins, 100 grams. Oh, okay. Um, you can use all your little scraps. I tend to use my scraps in the panty area because yes, you don't, see, you don't them. see those. And my favorite yarns, I put in the main leg part. 
Yes, to get the so nice jazzy colors. So that you can colors. see them when you're wearing your boots cute. and your skirt. Yeah. Yeah. Super cute. And I bet they're warm and cozy too. Oh, they're beautiful for a Canadian winter. Yes. So what's the name of the pattern? This is Sock Opus. Sock Opus. Like yes. O-P-U-S. That's right. Sock and it's opus. a toe-up pattern. Okay. Two at a time. Oh, well that's handy. Because imagine knitting one leg and, and then, then thinking that, oh my gosh, I had to knit <laughs> no. another leg. So you do them no, at the same please. time. That's excellent. <laughs> okay, let's go in and Dorothy and check out what's All right, inside. Come on in. There we go, coming so, in. Avoid filming low, because that's where all my stuff is. Storage. <laughs> <laughs> this is great. Look at the colors and things. So you can see you've got some ancient arts and you got some Noro. Yep, and this is Silver Cloud Alpaca from Elgenburg, Ontario, which is nearby Kingston, right. where I'm based. Yes. So have you got other hand oh I see some stuff that I've only seen on Etsy. Is that lichen and this is like an and lace. Oh, yeah, nice. from New Brunswick. Oh, are they New Brunswick? Okay, that's and right. Zen Garden. Oh, that looks Zen Young Garden is probably my top selling sock yarn on the truck. Okay. Yeah, it's, from what's... Sarnia, Ontario. Nice. Now, is Zen um, kind of an indie, like indie dyers, or who are they? Uh, they are an indie dyer. They're doing really well. I see that they're. Um, gaining attention through TNA in the States and oh, they're okay. selling a lot more in North America. And what's the blend on those? Oh, and there's a little bit of cashmere in these. <gasps> oh, yummy. 20%. 20, nice. Mm. <laughs> we want. 3D house of yarn. <laughs> So, uh, so it's like 20 cashmere? Yeah, so it's 70% superwash merino, 20% nice. cashmere, 10% nylon, because you want that in a sock yes, yarn. Yes, definitely. And look at the beautiful colors. Oh, those are scrumptious. Look at those, so pretty. Okay, gorgeous. What and else have you got? I've also got Riverside Studio from Wakefield, Quebec. Yes, they're coming to the Fiber Fest in Picton in yeah. 2017. Yay! Oh, look at their yarn. It looks like silk. Is that silk? Uh, this is a single uh, superwash merino. Is it really? What are the luster of that? Nice. Yummy, yummy. Mmm. <laughs> Delicious. <laughs> and they have a website. Do they sell directly on their website uh, as well? Yeah, and they also have Etsy. So you can see on their label, they have an Etsy label. Okay. Yep. Yep. Got it. But I okay. get it direct from them. And then they, they also do, actually this is their new label, they actually do an 80-20 sock. Nice. So 80 superwash merino, 20% nylon. So that's their new look. Oh good. I like that. That's cute. And the uh, the water. yeah, look at the lovely turquoise and oh, yeah. this green and that. Great color tones. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So that's Riverside. Look at these little lichen and lace games. sock yarns. So what is it, 25 grams in those guys about? Uh, these are 20 grams and 92 yards. Nice. Yeah. So good for heel toes and yeah. other fun nice things. Yeah, nice little, just nice little extra little sock yarns you can put in your tights if you're doing yeah. tights. <laughs> <laughs> or your sock yarn blanket or hexi puffs. Nice. Yes. Hexi puffs, what are hexi puffs? This is the beekeeper's quilt. Oh, oh, that would be warm. Those are puffy. Yeah, so these are little hexagonal um, nice. little shapes that you knit individually, and they're stuffed with a little bit of fiber fill. Okay. Uh, which you stuff just before you cast off. I have a feeling my cat would love that blanket. <laughs> <laughs> I would never get to use it. Gorgeous. So that's the he the uh, hexi pass from the be beekeeper's quilt. Cool. And the yarn advent calendar would actually be a great uh, oh, thing yes. to use for this your so cool. beekeeper's quilt. Or if you're doing the sock yarn blanket, which is the picture there, it's Shelly Kang sock yarn blanket. Okay. You're getting 24 mini skeins of Koigu yarn in this. Oh, Koigu. So there's some Koigu samples right Yeah, so this it. is the Koigu Lovely yarn, and so changes. you're getting 24 little mini skeins of this yarn. They have hundreds of colors. So okay. in the advent calendar, you're going to get a lovely surprise. You don't know what, color is, what color is coming, and that's really part of the fun. And you're only allowed to open one a day <laughs> until Christmas Day. That's going to be As I like hard. to say, the anticipation is exquisite. <laughs> Definitely. So now you can get these online on your website? Yep. So you can get these on pearlandjays.ca. 
or here on the track and they're only available until the end of this month. So right, we have a big tractor coming through. There he goes. <laughs> we'll wait for him to zoom by. Now we can hear. <laughs> All right, so we can go on your website and find it. That's these right. These are super cute. So did you, you're actually putting all these little envelopes together. So you're picking colors and plopping into things. Well, Very picking neat. colors is kind of a, not the word I would use. It's a more of a random process because right. we have, I've got thousands of mini skeins from Koi Goo. Right. So yes. it's a, it's a bit Koi random, Goo. but that's part of the fun, I think. And Koi Goo is another Canadian company, that's right? That's right. Koi Goo is based out of Chatsworth, Ontario. Nice. And again, internationally renowned. Yes, they are. They are shipping all over the world. That's fantastic. And they've been around for a number of years and they really are uh, quite a successful operation. Yes. And of course their yarn is beautiful, it speaks for itself. It is, and it's got a little bit extra twist in it, doesn't it, in their ply? Like they've got kind of a nice, let's do a little close Yeah, up and they it. also, there's has some hand painting involved. Yes, see that little extra, little bumps almost in, like in their way they're, they ply, mm -hmm. I like their, I like their So this is 100% non-superwash merino. Okay. So this it actually you could knit and felt if you actually wanted to. Yeah, it will it make great shawls. It though. will felt and of course there's no nylon in it either. So if you're making socks, you might want to reinforce your heels and toes. Right. Yes. But yeah, that is just a beautiful skein. Oh, yeah, very dark and rich with lots of um, different colors yeah, happening very and subtly. Coppers to chocolates and nutmeg. Yummy. I always think of food. Sorry. <laughs> That's great. Thanks so much, Joan. It was, it was my pleasure. All right. We'll see you again soon. Okay. Take care. Bye. So that was the most amazing weekend. It was incredible. Uh, we had such a good time with some great food and of course a little wine and some cider and a couple of beers. Uh, everyone seemed to have a fabulous time. I'm not sure that we were would consider us well rested from it, but wow, the things I learned from Kate and Fiona was incredible. So I just wanted to thank our sponsors because we did have some lovely door prizes given to us by um, Knitting Fever. Thanks Thomas, the bag of yarn was awesome and it got spread out through a number of very happy women. And Estella Yarns, you guys sent us some great packages to go in the door prizes and everyone was thrilled with the colors and fun stuff that you sent in the yarns. And also from Eucalan, sent us a great little package of um, the wool and wash soaks and all these different lovely scents that they have. Thank you very much, Lisa. And Louette, Pam, you are so great. Louette actually has now bought, it's a small, actually family-owned business, um, and Pam and her husband have taken over the Collage Knitting Needles in Prescott, Ontario. So they are now no longer made in the United States. They're those lovely cubic knitting needles, and they actually, it's so cool, you can get this now. They actually engraved on the knitting needles, Wool and Wine Knitting Retreat 2016, and they gave us a set for every single person that came. So we all got, I think it was 5.5 millimeter needles. Everybody got a set. So thanks, Pam. That was awesome. And of course, Jackson Falls Country Inn. It's such a nice, lovely inn. And Lee, our host, was amazing. And we had so much fun. The food was so good. And we had tea and coffee on call all day and it, it was fabulous. And I also want to say thank you to Amanda and Christina. Die Another Day, you guys rock. And yes, we're definitely doing the podcast live on location for Die Another Day. I totally want to do that. And the Grocery Girls, you guys are an inspiration to all of us podcasters and especially me as a newbie. Love you guys. They're, you're so much fun. I totally need to hang out and drink tea or other things with you. <laughs> And someday we will totally hook up and meet because Rhinebeck 2017 is gonna rock! I am totally, Joan and I from Pearl and Jay, we are totally creating 
a knitting, uh, sorry, a Rhinebeck getaway. We're renting a bus, we're renting hotel rooms. We are doing it, people. So email me if you want in on the deal from this end of Ontario. We are totally doing it next year. So thank you guys. Subscribe. Keep an eye on what we're doing because I'm trying to shake it up, do a little different from the usual podcast and show you cool stuff and interview neat people and take it from there. So we will see you next time. Later, girls. Happy knitting. Oh, and Eric, Sticks and Twine, the honey is coming in every shade, in every weight. It's coming. Sticks and Twine podcast. Eric, you rock. Talk to you guys later. Bye. When people come out and go, montage, it's the... It's the fashion montage. What, what does that look like? <laughs> it's the fashion montage. 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 Do, do, do.